Sometimes when working with wood you come across these gaps of resin filled holes and there's a lot of different ways to fix these holes so you can avoid this or this. And I will show you two ways of dealing with it and one is a little bit better than the other one in my opinion but we will get to that. We just don't want to get this or this so let's avoid it. I bought this shelf piece. It's spruce and it's a lot similar to pine. The main difference is that it doesn't have as many and as big nuts as pine does, but one of the drawbacks is that it's sweating resin. And don't get me wrong, you can find resin in many species, but only species from the conifers family. Broadleaves won't have resin, but they can have something that looks like resin, but that's another story. It's not even about this. Anyway, one way of dealing with these resin filled holes would be to just cut it off if possible and completely avoiding it. But sometimes that's not really an option and then you have to think of something like potty or cork or something else to fill up these holes quick and easy and that's fine if you intend to paint it but if you want to stain it then you would maybe like not to have these big uniform colors presented in the middle of your piece. So first you got to make sure that you remove as much resin as possible and I did that already. And then, in this example, I use a tiny piece of wood and continue to shape it a bit at a time. Not too much, just fine adjusting it so it fit into the hole as good as possible. And actually, I keep adjusting it a little bit even after I put in the glue, because I was too eager to use the glue, where I should have waited, but in the end it made no difference. Then, when it finally fits the whole well, I use a block and a hammer to make sure it's as steep as possible after hammering it in. Uh... They were hammering along! And yeah, with the excess glue I kinda just smear it to fill the rest of the gaps and then come back with a tiny bit of sawdust to go into those gaps where the glue is. In the second example, I used the trick that probably 98% of you already know, which is the glue and sawdust method. But this is not necessarily to learn new methods, it's more to see like what method you prefer to use in the end and how it looks in the end as well. But yeah, in this method, I, I use the sawdust and glue, and again, I remove the resin and I use a flathead screwdriver and a knife to remove as much as possible. Then the big lady makes a surprise visit before I start adding glue. Then sawdust and then repeat it one more time to make sure it's all covered. When the glue has dried completely, I come back and remove what sticks out, first with a tiny block plane for the piece of wood and then followed up with sandpaper on both sides. I must admit, 
I stained this after fixing the resin holes and this is how they turned out. And I prefer the first method since it makes for a more natural look. But I can also tell you that the second method looks much worse when seen on a picture compared to when you see it with your own eyes. It's, it's not even that bad. It, it looks really like crystallizing and yeah, I don't know, plasticky. It's, it's not that bad in, in real life. Or well, maybe it is, but my eyes just suck. I, I don't know. Do you have a preference on how to fix these holes? And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.